What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another Transfer Daily video for you guys today. In this video we're going to be talking about Edouard Mendy and continued negotiations with Renz over the potential transfer of the goalkeeper. We're also going to be talking about Michi Batshuayi to West Brom, another club that's been interested in signing and we're going to talk about how severe the links are to this deal and if they are actually just going to come and take him off the wage bill because no club looks like they're doing it right now. We'll talk about Kai Havertz for a little bit as well. I, I'll be real, there isn't really much to talk about on the Kai Havertz part. Like we know everything that's been done. Sky Sports have announced that the deal's finally been confirmed. Yeah, bit late, guys. Sky Sports have always been horrendously late recently. Their record's been poor. Sky Germany's also saying that this deal's finally been reported, but we know that the deal's been reported. We know that the medical terms have been agreed we know that we've been strong favorites since at least mid-june we know all of this we know the terms have been agreed contracts been agreed you know he's spoken to lampard you know he's spoken to czech and abramovich you know he wants to move we know everything that has been happening because it's been going round and round in circles for the last month or so and i think i don't like to speak on behalf of all chelsea fans because Yadars and all them lot seem to get all vexed whenever I say anything like that But I think I speak on behalf of all Chelsea fans Well, I just say I am tired I'm so tired of Havertz updates and nothing is happening. We know this deal is going to be announced. I do think it's a bit of impatience from all of us, like myself included. I've been hella impatient on this one as well just because we know that this deal is happening. It's just taking ages, but it should be announced maybe Monday. I know Germany have a friendly against Spain tonight. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if I might do a watch along for that as well. So let me know if you guys want to see that down in the comment section below as well. But after the international duties come round, I don't think there's going to be anything stopping this deal. You might as well come back to London with Timo Werner and Antonio Rudiger, both of them together. We'll have to see how long this one takes, but we know, we can relax at least and say that we know that this Kai Havertz deal is done. It's just, every day you're hearing new rumours, you're hearing the deal's been done, something's been done, and it hypes you up a little bit, but reality, what has changed? I've seen so many articles from guys like, not even guys like, I won't I want say Fabrizio Romano in general, but I'll say journalists in general. We've seen so many articles say, this is done, or Kai Havertz to Chelsea is now official, or Kai Havertz will be official in the next few days. And it's like, yeah, we know this. I, I mean, I said Fabrizio Romano's name. He's probably the only guy who's just outright said, I've said this has been done for at least nine days now. And I think we need to be calm at that point, but it's just, let's hurry up and let's get this deal done. And same way, let's just stop sending rumours and BS stuff going around in circles, because that's just agitating the Chelsea fan base even more. But let's go straight into the first actual bit of transfer news, because we haven't spoken about that yet, and it's already been three minutes. Rennes won 30 million for Eduard Mendy. Chelsea are still in for signing the goalkeeper with two bids rejected by Rennes. I think the last bid that we went for was an £18 million bid for the goalkeeper. And Renz have now told Chelsea that, will, that they will only accept an offer of £30 million plus for the goalkeeper. And um, it is annoying. It is the last thing you want to hear, especially with the amount of money that we spent in this window and how much money we haven't recouped back. But... It is also understandable. Renz only signed Mendy last season, so they're not looking to get rid of a still relatively new asset in their first window, especially on the cheap. Also, Renz are a club that are showing ambition. They want to fight for the top four places and maybe try and compete PS with PSG in the coming years, regardless of how hard that will be. You take a look at their recent transfer activity, they've been looking at young defenders and they're trying to transition their club in a positive way. And they're also interested in Jeremy Boga as well. And I think if Jeremy Boga joins them, that's a bit more cash coming our way in a sell-on fee, which also means that we can offer them more money for Mendy as well. So it's annoying, but it's kind of understandable. Mendy is now our number one option. We were looking at bigger names like Jan Black and Mark andre to Stegen initially, but Jan Black costs too much with the activity that we've done. And Mark andre to Stegen, I think, is on over 300k a week or something like that. So he would literally butcher our wage structure, so it never made any sense. Mendy is now our number one option. I do feel like the club's um, taking on the advice of more of their tactical advisors, such as Christoph Lodishon, who was a big fit, who was a big advocate of Mendy, also wasn't a big advocate of Kepa as well. So 
it makes sense that clubs now trying to listen to their advice more because no one really listened to anyone's advice on Kepa, especially with the way the scouting was because the scouting just didn't make sense. We went completely in another direction. And that's kind of been a problem for Chelsea, like with our short-term planning and the hiring and firing of managers, which I've never said was a problem because we still won trophies. But a problem that was we never really gained a philosophy. We always we picked a manager with different styles of play nearly every single time. So we were always in transition. We never really got to bring in any youth players because of that, because those managers were coming in with instant expectations of trophies. They were going to play the experienced players who know how to win, or they were going to bring in their own players. Now that we've got finally a long-term plan for the club, we're now looking at long-term options. And he's a great goalkeeper. I'm going to leave some stats over the top against Kepa and against Ariola as well. He's another goalkeeper that we've been linked with. And he's six foot four. He's experienced. He's commanding. He has good distribution and a massive wingspan that allows him to control his box. So he already offers something that Kepa doesn't offer, which is commanding and control of the box. Because if I remember correctly, Kepa didn't even come out and catch an entire cr corner the entire 1920 Premier League season, which is just yet another shocking stat. But it is a new season. I'm really trying to be light on all the Kepa slander because I tried to defend him a lot last season. Kepa did say he wanted to. Stay Day and he wanted to fight for his Chelsea place and as long as it's not 1920 Kepa I do think the only way is up for him I also think competition is going to be brilliant for him and he needs it I want to take a source from the 12-13 season when De Gea had that poor 11-12 season and then they brought in Anders Lindegaard for competition and he was actually starting a lot of the Premier League games as well initially David De Gea fixed up his form fixed up his game had a great 12-13 season and never looked back until recent seasons of course but yeah he never looked back and he was an iconic goalkeeper for them for at least five years minimum so I'm hoping it's kind of the same story with Kepa like I say it the only way is up for him but we have to wait and see I hope we get Mendy in because we just need a new goalkeeper that's the only thing I'm waiting on to actually be confident in saying that we can challenge for the title I'm saying it very quietly now because we still don't have the goalkeeper and it look we look like Liverpool 17-18 right now where they signed Van Dijk and they have the amazing team they still like carry us in goal so we need to go for a goalkeeper so it's, it's the same thing with left back for me left back we were in for so many options Really and truly, if you put a gun to my head, I would say I didn't care because our left backs were so poor at the time. We needed a left back regardless because they would be better. I am the same mind for a goalkeeper. You could even end up getting someone like Nick Pope and Tim Krul. I wouldn't care. Competition is just good and competition is just what's needed. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Second piece of news, we're going to talk about Mishi Batshuayi. And the club have been trying to offload him for a while. He hasn't started the Premier League game since February, which I think was that Manchester United game where he missed three great chances in the first half and failed to grab that brass ring that Vince McMahon talks about a lot but he hasn't been involved in the Chelsea team since then and he's now our fourth choice striker with Timo Werner as a rival and you know me I've never really rated Mishi Batshuayi I've been honest on that I said 17-18 his performance was, was so bad I wanted Alvaro Morata to start games which says a huge lot even back in 16-17, never really looked like he was going to overtake Diego Costa. Had a couple decent loan spells at Palace, at Borussia Dortmund, but he just never really looked like he fit in at Chelsea. Had a couple great moments for us, so he will stay in the, na in the names of some fans for a while. You remember the goal that won us a league at West Brom, Atletico away, Ajax away as well. But you don't keep a player for moments. And if you do, it's because of how much many of those big moments he can give you, like a Divock Origi. And Divock Origi also has talent, so that's completely different. Mishu Batshuayi has never really broken into the first team. He's never really looked like he was threatening to break into the first team. Even in his first season, I saw him struggle in games against Peterborough and Brentford and... He's just poor, not Chelsea quality, and he's also on 100k a week, so we need to get him off the wage packet. Leeds were initially interested in him, but they've gone for Rodrigo from Valencia instead. Crystal Palace were also interested in re-signing him, but they've gone quiet now as well. And now West Brom look to be interested as Slavin Bilic looks to try and get some attacking reinforcements for his team next season. Bilic was also interested in him in 2016 when he was at West Ham, but obviously he went to Chelsea instead. Cut probably better for Bilic as well because he would have got him a lot cheaper now than he would have back in 2016 but you know my stance on Mishi Batshuayi whoever wants him have him 
just take him. He's on one year left on his deal, I think, as well. So he ain't going to go for too much. But it's more about just getting him off the wage bill. Anyone who wants him, please have. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. These are the only news topics that I'm going to be talking about today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Charles.